Kid Reporters at Work. How do kid reporters tell the story when the news is about improving the lives of children? Each year, the news magazine Time for Kids selects several young people to serve as TFK kid reporters. These enterprising kids are not professional journalists, but like adult reporters, they still have to show they are qualified for the job. Three skills they must have are persistence in tracking down a story, good interviewing skills, and the ability to write clearly about complicated topics. Here's a behind-the-scenes look at two TFK reporters and two of the stories they covered for the magazine. The reporters don't have much in common, except that they are both determined to do a good job as reporters covering an interesting story. The stories seem quite different at first, too. However, they have some strong similarities. Reporter Terence Cheramka Story, a world conference just for kids. Terrence, from Pennsylvania, plays softball, basketball, and field hockey. Field hockey. She loves to read and write. She's also very interested in travel and has visited France and Thailand. In 2002, however, she had the chance to meet people from all over the world without traveling very far at all. That year, Terrence got an assignment from TFK to go to New York City to cover the opening ceremonies of the United Nations Special Session on Children. The event was a follow-up to a conference held at the UN in 1990 to promote the rights of children. World leaders and 375 young people met to discuss what had been accomplished since 1990 and how much more needed to be done. Issues with the highest priority were health care, education, and basic, basic rights for the children of the world. UN Secretary General Kofi Annan addressed the opening session. Speaking directly to the young people in attendance, he said, Your voices will be heard, I promise you. For her story, Terrence interviewed kids from several different countries about what they hoped the conference would accomplish. We hope to get kids closer to the government and making decisions, said Bala Subrayanya of India. Terrence also reported on her tour of the United Nations building. Her tour ended with an exhibit showing the devastating effects of war. She saw pictures of child soldiers fighting in war-torn countries. She wrote, It really reminded me of why the UN is working so hard to help improve children's lives and why its mission is so important. Reporter Martin Jacobs Story Kid Scientist Starts Kids Charity Martin, who lives in New York, is a computer buff, plays the piano, and wants to be an airline pilot when he grows up. When he got the assignment to interview Andrew Hugh, he expected to be talking about science. After all, Andrew had just become the youngest winner of the Washington State Science and Engineering Fair. The 11-year-old scientist won the grand prize for identifying a particular gene that plays an important role in keeping the human body healthy. Martin soon discovered that being a science whiz is just one of Andrew's accomplishments. He's also an athlete who comp- competes in swimming, but the main thing Andrew wanted to tell Martin about was the World Children Organization, WCO. Andrew founded this organization along with his brother Patrick. The brothers started this venture in order to help improve the lives of children. In that way, its mission is similar to that of the UN Special Session on Children. The UN Special Session identified three high-priority issues. In contrast, WCO focuses on a single issue for now. Andrew and Patrick believe that improving education is the best way they can make a positive difference for children. They know that, unlike the United States, there are places where a free education isn't available to all kids. To help meet that need, Andrew and Patrick had the idea of producing videos about science, math, and languages for children in countries where there aren't enough qualified teachers. Without education, Andrew said, the problems of poverty, hunger, child labor, and other abuses of children's rights will never end. Story. Different reporters, different stories. A common theme. Terrence and Martin both wrote about kids and organizations involved in helping children. In Terrence's story, the organization, the United Nations, is a large one that was founded by the nations of the world. The kids involved came from many different countries. The size and political power of the UN enables it to work on several high-priority issues at once. In Martin's story, the organization is a small one, the World Children Organization, founded by two kids. For now, the WCO focuses on education as its single issue. 
Clearly, all of these kids at the UN Special Session, Andrew and Patrick at WCO, and reporters Terrence and Martin share a commitment to making the world a better place for everyone, especially children. Child Labor in the USA Throughout its history, the United States has counted on kids to lend a hand on farms and in factories. In the 1800s, children as young as seven worked in textile mills for 12 hours a day. By the end of the 19th century, almost two million kids performed hazardous jobs in mills, mines, and factories. Many concerned citizens worked to change this. Photographer Lewis Hine, who took these pictures of young cotton mill workers, was one of them. In 1938, a U.S. law was passed that limits work hours for kids. The law also requires safe conditions. The law still exists, but some people break it. An estimated 800,000 children work illegally in the U.S. today. Most of them work on farms and jobs related to farming. Some work with heavy machinery, poisonous chemicals, or under other conditions that could harm them.